Let's go live now to Washington, D.C., and to the Republican strategist, Rena Shah. Rena, I know you met with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the leading Democrat, on Tuesday. What did you take away from that meeting, and more generally, from the charges that the Democrats have chosen to level against the president? Yeah, this evening is certainly one where so many, like myself, inside the Beltway are feeling sort of just not not any other emotion but wow what a day this was truly a historic day and for me to have seen and heard from speaker pelosi on such a day as today uh for me i have to tell you it was really humbling uh that a woman of her age and her stature and of everything she stands for could speak so eloquently after the morning the morning here in dc was filled with number one unveiling those two charges that are so important and they were very succinct, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. And then only an hour and a half later did Speaker Pelosi come out and mention that she had struck a deal with the White House over the USMCA. And so one moment we're talking impeachment inquiry, the next moment we're talking trade. And then around lunchtime, she met with a group of us at the Politico Women Rule Summit. And she so beautifully stated what the reasons were for the Democrats coming out and saying that the president's actions in regard to Ukraine are impeachable. And so tonight, I think so many of us are really wishing we could hit the fast forward button and get to next week already. Uh, as a Republican strategist, tell us what you think. There seems to be a shift in the Republicans' lines of defense from Mr. Trump did nothing wrong to, well, perhaps it was, un it was troubling, perhaps it was not quite right, but it was not impeachable. What should we make of that? Well, I think what we should really look at right now is how unified the Republicans are. And this is something that actually, I think, won them the White House in, in 2016. The, the Republicans fall in line pretty well, and they, they coalesce behind one message. And so at first it was sort of the Democrats are fudging the facts, the Democrats are lying. And now today what I heard in response to the two articles of impeachment being revealed to the American public was Republicans coming and saying Democrats are acting on emotion. They have never liked this president, and therefore, they, their swift um, sort of movement on this inquiry and, and heading towards an impeachment vote is purely because they want to deny this president a re-election that they believe he's pretty much guaranteed. And so in many ways, I will say, say this, that all those listening, just look at how unified the Republicans are behind this one message. And, and whether they believe it to be wrong or not, they're saying, sure, the president has done something wrong, fine. But is it impeachable? That's up for debate with Democrats, particularly moderate Democrats who are going to have a tough re-election if they vote for impeachment next. Uh, they're going to have that tough re-election next year if they vote for impeachment next week. They're saying, are the president's actions really impeachable? So I, again, say the Democrats, it's, it's really theirs to lose here. Rena, on the day that these charges are filed, charges which accuse the president of abusing the power of his office to exert pressure on an American ally at war with Russia, it sends a curious message, doesn't it? The White House puts out this particular picture, I think we put on screen now, of the president in the Oval Office with the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. I mean, you could take it as just diplomacy or a deliberate provocation or as a kind of indication in plain sight of where the president's loyalties lie. As a Republican strategist, it makes defense more difficult, surely, doesn't it? Well, one would, one would think that. Conventional wisdom would lead you to that. I've made my career in Republican politics, and I regularly meet with Bush appointees, those who work for President George W. Bush and other former Republican administrations. People are aghast at how the Trump administration seems to almost act recklessly without any regard for, forget the rule of law, just what society would think, forget what establishment folks on Capitol Hill would think. They really almost don't care to uh, conceive their intentions in any way. So it's a 50-50 chance here. Was it a coincidence or was it something sort of orchestrated to say, look at what we can do in plain sight? It's always a 50-50 shot with this White House. And I think it just goes to the nature of how this president operates unconventionally without regard for anybody else but himself. And, and that really speaks to why he went to a foreign power, Ukraine, and said, would you mind doing a favor for me? And as again, as a lifelong Republican, when I saw that transcript of the call with the Ukraine, Ukrainian president, and I saw the word favor in black and white, I, I really felt a connection with Speaker Pelosi's words today where she said, the founders of the United States gave, gave us guidance on what to do with a president who acts this way, who engages a foreign power. And I want to make one note as well, if I may. 
This is really important here. Our U.S. founders were so concerned about the interference of foreign powers in our elections, in our republic, that they made it so that nobody can be a U.S. president unless they've been born on U.S. soil. And I think that is just so big, so tremendous. We ought to remember that, that our founders were that concerned about foreign interference. And the Trump administration seems to make it like it's passe and it's just business as usual. Arena, very interesting to talk to you as ever. Thank you very much. Thank you.